This is a Celestron 6SE with a Celestron wedge mounted using an extension dovetail to which I have this extension bar connected with a counterweight. I've got a 50 millimeter SV Bonnie guide scope, a SV Bonnie 905C guide camera. I'm also using a focal reducer and down here I've got the focus motor and the camera is a ASI 294 uh, MC Pro. Um, what I thought I'd do is go through the procedure for doing a polar alignment, which is something I had only just figured out in the last week or so. Okay, step one. Let's get CPWI up and running. Uh, here is an Xbox controller. And I have it connected through CPWI to my mount. And uh, the super useful feature here is that you can control the telescope with the controller. I'm going to point the telescope to where south usually is. And although I'm slightly off to my sticker there, that should be it right there. And then that looks pretty close. Okay, point your telescope so that it's parallel to the wedge plate, approximately due south. Check. Okay, select the target. Uh, zoom out. And sure, why don't we go for Regulus? So we'll pick Regulus. And let's go to Regulus. I've got my red dot finder on. I'm gonna use my controller. And looking through the red dot finder, oh yeah, I see, I'm off by a little bit. Yep, I overshot. Okay, that's better. I should have a star, and there it is. It is much closer to where it should be. Oh, there's my Batnoff mask, it's on. Now let's center this. Now I left my Batnov mask on so that I can do a quick uh, focus. I am going to go into my focus controls, bring up my focus control panel. Let's do a couple more. The pattern looks good to me. Okay, I've got this little tab here. I made out of tape, which makes it easier to remove the mask Let's bump this down to three. And bring that star back into the center. This first step is pretty straightforward. This is what, what we all do with CPWI. We do a three, four, five star alignment. And that gives the mount a pretty good model of where things are in the sky. What makes a difference is the ASPA that's done afterwards. The ASPA um, kind of tells you if your alignment was perfect, where would the stars actually be? Uh, what you do is you manually shift or you manually adjust your um, mount position, adjusting your, your declination, your right ascension knobs to point the uh, mount where the pointing model is telling you that the stars should be if you have the right alignment. 
Yeah, so let's, let's pick the next star. Let's go to Arcturus. Right, the last piece of alignment is actually drift alignment. What drift alignment does is it uses PhD2 to tell you which way things are drifting um, because your alignment is off or if your alignment is off. By tweaking your uh, mount controls, your declination, your right ascension, you can really zero in on, on pretty good alignment. Okay, so Arcturus, are we looking at Arcturus? Well, I'm guessing that's it right here. Uh, so let's use our slew controls. Okay, so it's not perfectly centered, but it's close enough, and that will allow drift alignment to, to fix whatever uh, misalignment we have. Let's go find something on the other end of the sky. Okay, Beetlejuice. See it. I have to go down a bit. I think I almost got it. A little more up. Okay, let's see. Hey, hey, there it is. That would have been really, really tricky if I had to come around here and press the slew controls on my laptop. Okay, CPWI, and centered. So we've got three stars, um, I think that's good enough. Let's head into a all-star polar alignment. So I'll click finish here, and perform ASPA. So to perform the ASPA, we're gonna have to find a star that's relatively low down to the horizon, and hopefully somewhere fairly close. We can go with our part, Alphard, 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 I don't know how you pronounce that. Let's go with this one. It's fairly bright, should be easy to spot. Okay, this one we're going to try to get as accurate as we can. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're centered, we're going to press centered, and the telescope is going to slew away and it's going to point to where it thinks the star should be if we had the right polar alignment. So that happened. Now we have to adjust the alignment knobs until the star is centered within the telescope again. And wow, the star is completely gone. Our alignment is way off. Okay, so if we are that far off, actually, let's see if we can see this in the PhD2 field of view. Uh, okay, so pH2 field of view, it's down here. That is the star. So we are too high right now. We need to lower the telescope a little bit. I've turned my laptop so I can see the screen as I adjust the scope. So here's what we do. We're too low here. Let's turn this knob. shot it go down a little bit oh you look at that now so we have according to uh, Celestron CPWI completed our ASPA all-star polar alignment so at this point <clears throat> what you would normally do is redo your alignment now that you're pointing in the right direction to do a drift alignment, we go into tools and drift align. Slow to the meridian and the equator. All right, and then press drift to measure the drift. So this is kind of a repetitive process. Let's go to CPWI and we need to drift or come to the meridian. And this is gonna be close. Uh, Regulus is pretty close. There is another star here that seems fairly close. Let's go get this one. So we'll 
go to. Okay. Over there. Yeah, we've got a couple of stars showing here. Very good. Now let's click on drift. Now what's going to happen is <clears throat> the graph is going to go and here we're going to have to adjust the azimuth controls, meaning the uh, left and right until the declination line is level. So the declination line right now is, is showing in red and it is sloping. <clears throat> well, that line, I don't know if it's going to look any better than it is right now. Well, that is close. That is really close. Okay, I'm gonna call this one done and now we go on to altitude. So to do the altitude, uh, we now have to slew to a star towards the horizon. So, uh, slew to a location near the equator and the eastern or western horizon. So, to do that, let's go find something. Let's zoom out here a little bit. There's the equator. There's Orion. We know that's out of view. But there's a star. HR2335. Let's go find HR2335. Okay, hopefully that will not be hidden by a house. Um, we just need something in that vicinity. It doesn't have to be that exact star. It would be nice if it was. Okay, here we are. And let's do drift. So here it says sleuth. Then you're okay. We are near the equator. Uh, and we're at the horizon. Press drift to measure drift. Watch the declination trend again. And then adjust the altitude. And now we're going to be adjusting the altitude knob. Now look over here, that purple circle is really all over the place. So even though at the meridian and the equator we're good, now at the equator and at the uh, western horizon, we are just all over the place. Wow, look at that. That's not bad. That line is really close error of 0.48 I think that did it okay I'm gonna call it that is the alignment all right so what's next is uh, just slewing back to uh, facing south redoing an alignment and then we're good to go that is close to centered let's just bump it the other way take up some of that slack Good to go here. Now we need to do some guiding. So I'm gonna set to multi-star guiding. I am set to multi-star. So I'm just gonna press the find stars button and start guiding. Let that settle in. I do feel the breeze, so that's not gonna be good. But I'm going to select my six hour plan, which is going to do 120 gain, 120 exposures of 180 seconds each, same as my DSLR. So back here at Nikon, start capture. There it goes. And here as well. APT, turn off live view, and start, and that's it, we're good to go. So here I'm using Tiger VNC to check on my laptop remotely, and it looks like the guiding has settled down, the wind has died down, and things are tracking pretty well, I've got a total error of 1.35. Uh, seems to be 
pretty consistent over the past little while uh, in terms of where we are. So here's M51 auto guiding against multiple stars. Dithering is on. Here I've got APT running through a plan and it's dithering right now. And then over here I have backyard Nikon taking wide angle shots. So backyard Nikon. Here's M51 right here. Once these pictures get stacked, I should be able to make out a little bit more detail. And uh, I will add the results to the end of this video.